I love this kind of stuff. You know, I mean, I got uh, who, who's who's heard my because I can share it quick. Who has heard my story? Real quick. Okay. Okay. For those that haven't, I'll mention it real quick. Okay. I fell in love with Rich pretty quick on Friday. I'm like, this dude, he's different. He cares. You know, he's just such a genuine, nice person. You can just feel it. Um, and I think we've, we've got a lot in common and some synergy there. So I'm like, you know what? If I can uh, come hang out with Rich and meet the team I'm in, you know. Um, for those that don't know, I got started in the insurance industry when I was 19 as an intern, making cold calls out of a phone book which you guys have probably done at some point. And, and I didn't know like, you know, I was actually supposed to be doing that at the time. I was doing it anyway. And then I transitioned into being a full-time agent. I'm 20, I'm in college, taking 21 credit hours a semester, playing basketball, a student athlete, practices, games, tournaments, all those things. And I look back and I'm like, you know what, I could have made like a lot of people like will make excuses why they're not successful. I could have made a lot of excuses along the way, you know? Um, and I had, I remember a recruiting meeting. It was a room like this and the sales manager said, okay, everybody stand up. Okay. And so we stood up and he says, take a look around. I'm like what's, what's going on here? What's he doing? You know? And he says, all right, now everybody, but one person sit down. And he said something that really woke me up. He said, maybe one of you will make it. And I'm like, well, and that's why 80% nation comes from the fact that 92% of insurance agents fail within their first three years. And what I thought in that moment, I don't know, I don't know how you guys feel, but when, when someone challenges me like that, in, I may not externally do or say anything, but internally I can promise you I'm doing and saying something, right? And I said, if there's going to be a one, this dude doesn't know me very well, if there's gonna be a one, I'm going to be the one, you know? And so I committed, I actually, in that moment, took a pad and I wrote out a goal. I'm big on goals, I'm big on targets. You guys have goals as an office, right? Which is amazing. And I wrote down, I will earn $100,000 my first year in the insurance business. I was only selling life insurance at the time. And, you know, practices, games, school, all those things. And just cold calling and cold door knocking I was fortunate, I worked very hard, and in eight months, I made $117,000 in, in eight months from selling life insurance, 20 years old, all those things. And it really, I really fell in love with the process of going out and literally cold door knocking, a lot of cold door knocking, uh, a lot of cold calling. I remember cold, you know, door knocking 175 doors on a Friday or cold calling for six hours on a Sunday. Like I was committed to doing whatever it takes. Well, you hear a lot of people be like, you know what? I will do whatever it takes. I will promise I will do whatever it takes, but I won't do that. <laughs> or I will do whatever it takes. I will start, promise, I'll start tomorrow. Well, what's, what's wrong with today, you know? And so I noticed the trend with a lot of salespeople and agents in, in that really it, it, what determines their success is right here. It ain't, it ain't rich, it ain't me, right? It, it's, it's, it's right here. And once you can start to like challenge yourself and focus on your own mental mindset and start to realize, okay, I can improve. I can think bigger. I can push harder. Then before you know it, uh, you start to see some, some changes along the way. So the reason I started actually training because, yeah, there's a website up there, because I had, uh, I had a manager that called me and said, hey, this is why I love stuff like this. I truly love it. Because it's my favorite thing to do. You can ask Andy like this. If I could do this every day, all day, I would do this. That's it. Because I, I had a manager that called me from like four hours away in Missouri back when I was 20. Maybe 20, maybe 21. He said, I've got two agents. They're really struggling. They're making no sales. They need your help. So I'm like, okay. He's like, can you drive up here and help them? I'm like, yeah, I'll do it. I'll take them door knocking. So I drove up four hours door knocked with them. We wrote cold door knock. We wrote five life insurance policies in one afternoon from literally cold door knocking. And the look on their face and the way it made them feel and the energy that it brought them, that's what, that, that made me feel good. Like I enjoyed seeing them make money and make sales more than I did myself. And, and, and I'm like, I remember driving home. I left the business with them. I didn't take any commission. I just drove home. 
And I thought, if I can do that again in the future, that's that's a passion, right? You start to notice, like everybody starts to notice what their passion is, that, that was mine. So that's where, for several years, I tried to help others succeed. So in 2015, we started throwing up YouTube videos. Um, we've been up YouTube videos for almost five years. We've got 22, 23,000 agents subscribed to our channel. Sounds like Rich is one of them, and maybe others. And we put out videos constantly. And, and it's it's the reason is, in our marketing company, we have this phrase, people work with people who educate them. So we try to simply educate people in hopes that you know maybe they'll work with us in some way, right? So Rich has jumped on the uh, CA cell system for the team. And I want to challenge you guys to plug in, and I'm going to do a little training, but I want to challenge you to plug into that cell system every single day. And what's going to happen is right now, some of you may be like, you know what, I'm an okay agent. I'm very good or I'm average or I'm subpar or I know I can be better or whatever the case is. Deep down, what really shaped my ability to be better from literally knowing nothing about insurance, being 20 years old, being immature, having no sales experience, no product knowledge to actually making 100 grand in eight months was, it was a few things, okay, it was a few things. The first one was I wanted to learn everything I possibly could about sales. So I remember downloading, we didn't have a CA cell system back then, so in my, my office didn't invest anything like that, right? So I remember picking up Brian Tracy's book, you may have, you may have, uh, you probably know what I'm about to say, The Art of Closing the Cell by Brian Tracy. And I, 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 I listened to that CD so many times that I eventually had to reprint it off the computer because it like stopped working, because like that scratched up or something called The Art of Closing the Sale or Brian Tracy. And I listened to that audio book so many times. Like how most people are, 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 a lot of people go throughout life and they're like, well, I really want to be good at this. But then they drive home and they listen to music. Or, or I really want to be good at this. Or I really want to be in shape, but they never work out, right? Or I really want to do this, 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 and this. But they don't ever do it. And, and for me, I, for whatever reason, if I say I'm gonna do something, I, I do my best to do it. But I've become obsessed with like, a goal. And I think a lot of people need some type of target in the near future to pull them in that direction and to keep them focused. And for me, it was making 100 grand my first year. I was going to do whatever it took, right? So that's the first thing, is I was committed to learning and improving daily. Daily. I believe if, it's good, if something is good enough to do once, it's good enough to do every day. So I would recommend highly to plug into this CA cell system, whether as a group or on your own, every single morning. Every single morning. And some of the videos you're gonna be like, you know what, that didn't help me today. Some of the videos you're gonna be like, holy freak, that's the best thing I've ever heard, right? It's just a, it's a timing thing. But what it does is, by plugging into content on a daily basis, what does it do? It creates discipline, it creates consistency, and it creates what I love to see in salespeople, coachability. Because what we there's three things we look for in our office when we hire salespeople, and that is, are you reliable? Like when, 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 when I talk to our salespeople before they kick off on their first day and their first shadow day, I tell them there's three things, right? The first one is, is, is reliable, right? If you got a tummy ache and you're gonna skip work, you're not gonna show up, you're never gonna make it on my team, right? I'm honest with them, okay? Are, are you reliable? The second piece I always tell is, is coachable. And I tell them like, I'll have people to show up and they're like, dude, I've got 50 years of experience. And well, that may be a little excessive, but because it might be retired, but I got all this experience and all this stuff, right? And they're like, man, I know, I, like, I know everything. I'm like, well, you're not gonna make it here with them. I'm like, what do you mean? Because you think you know more than me and my way works. My way works here and if you don't follow my way, then you never make it, right? And so I'm honest with them, right? So that's why I love, love people that are coachable that are a sponge, that know they can do better, that want to be better, and that will, will listen along the way. And then the third thing is, is work ethic and focus. If they show up and they will consistently put in the work and they're focused and they're determined and, and they're, they're not like, you know, hanging out by the coffee machine 42 times a day, they're not going to the bathroom 87 times, they're not going outside to smoke 411 times, you know what I mean? They're like, they're focused while they're here and they're actually trying to be productive with their time. My dad has this saying, he says, you can work 
half the day and be successful. He said, you choose which 12 hours you want to work and you, you, you will absolutely be successful. <laughs> he always says that. I, I, it's funny. I, he thinks he said that on, on the virtual 8% live. That's hilarious. I'm like, I don't know if I've heard that before, but I'm like, that's awesome. So the first thing is learn. That first year, I absolutely wanted to learn. I was committed to learning. I knew I was coachable. I knew I, I wasn't very good. I didn't know a lot, right? Second thing I focused on my first year is because I, and I caught it pretty quick was I needed to be phenomenal at building rapport with people. I truly believe that, he, here's, here's, a, here's a different synopsis of a sales process, by the way. Someone needs to know, like, and trust me, right? There needs to be some common ground. Once that happens, then I'm able to find a pain point or a problem and then I'm able to offer a solution very simply that's really what we're doing in this office right is okay if people can know like and trust us we can find some common ground we can build a relationship with them right and we can find a pain point or a problem that we can offer a solution and solve their problem right so I mean that's really what we're what what we did rich and I did on Friday you know but we, we focused more here than more, most people ever would, right? And then, like, literally, Derek, after the call, said, man, wow, we spent, like, 20 minutes just hanging out with this guy and building a relationship. I didn't think we were ever going to get to, like, seeing if there was a problem. I'm like, dude, that's the point. He was know? thinking transactional, and you and I were thinking relational. So 100%. That was, that was a big difference. 100%. More people don't. More people are thinking about, what am I going to get for this? How much money am I going to make, make for this? Where, where's the sale? All right, when do I ask for the business, right? If there's no relationship, like, because you guys call people all the time, I guarantee it. And you say, okay, I can save you $452 over the next year on your car insurance. And they're like, somebody said no to that, I guarantee it. And you're like, that is freaking weird. Like, that makes no sense. Why would you say no to that, right? Well, my, 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 uh, a uh, home insurance agent uh, who works for my dad in, in, in Springfield, uh, they told my wife, hey, we can save you like 600 bucks on your on your home insurance. And she's like, yeah, I like what we have. I'm like, what? <laughs> she's like, I don't want to mess with it. It's $600, you know, which, yeah, that sounds a little arrogant maybe, but, but she's like, it's just not worth my time, you know? And so, but it was a new home insurance agent it was working in the office that she didn't really know that well yet. And it felt like it was going to be some hoops. It was going to create problems for her instead of solving problems. And they didn't tend to spend time building that relationship. So when that happens, they just don't, they don't fully, what? They don't fully trust me yet. Right? And more, most people skip this. They're like, what's in it for me? So Nate, Nate Offer, one of our speakers, he has a, a saying, um, W, the, he says people's favorite radio station is W, I may butcher that, we'll see, W-I-I-F-M. What's in it for me? That's, that's what everybody cares about, right? That's the radio station they're listening to every single day. They don't care about anybody else, what's in it for me? In sales, you can get really good and phenomenal at sales when you start to think, what's in it for them? So just totally flip it. What's in it for them? What can I do for them? How can I help them? On a scale of one to 10, how much have we built the relationship so far? Because in, in, in y'all's business, it is entirely relationship based. They can buy house insurance, car insurance, life insurance, commercial insurance, or anything else you sell. Anywhere across the state of Texas. True. There's like 10,000 people doing what you guys do in Dallas, you know? Like there's, there's 1.1 million life insurance agents in the US. Mm -hmm. There's probably more selling Dominata. Okay, that's that's insane, right? So why you guys? Why here? Why this team? And why now, right? So that's what I focus on entirely. And, and there's times where I got away from this. Let me be honest for a second. Before we get on the, before we get on with Rich, I was on with another gentleman 
who I had never met, that watches our stuff. He's on every webinar. And I jumped here too fast. I missed the sell. And yeah, maybe he's like, maybe, maybe we'll get it in the future. I got off, I got off I got off the Zoom and and I, yeah and, and that's why I, I believe in training every day because I don't get on Zooms and, and physically go out and like try to sell people a product every single day now you know I need to be I'm trying to get involved more like I don't normally offer free Zooms free strategy calls just to jump on with people but I'm like you know what I need to get back in the practice of it well, what happened was I missed this piece in my own training I missed this piece and then I got off the phone I got off the Zoom and I looked at Derek and I'm like dude. I didn't build any rapport. Talk about me. Talk about the solution. I didn't like. I didn't. Instead of that was it. And then I got on the rich. I'm like, dude, I don't care if we talk about product at all. I'm building a relationship with this guy. And then I, I met him, and I'm like, this is easy, dude. I, I'm like, we can talk. He had Lance Armstrong behind him, you know. I'm like, dude, we, that was, was that at home? Yeah. I'm like, I could talk to this dude for hours, you know. And we could, like, we, we had. I don't know. We talked about the we talked about Brady. We talked about Armstrong. We talked about you know what I mean. It was just like it was easy, and it was never about making the sell. And Derek got off. He's like, I see what you mean now. I'm like, dude, Rich and I have a relationship now. Like we trust each other. We he could tell that I wasn't there just to sell it. He probably thought I was just there to sell him something. You know, like he's he's you know he's a smart guy. Cody offers a free strategy call. Like he's strategizing to see if he can sell you something, right? That's that's normal, okay? Everybody's in sales at some point, some level, okay? Somebody's in sales, okay? But I spent so much time here and remembered how to make a sale that he told me the pain points I didn't have to ask. And I asked him what, what of our solutions made sense. And he's like, that one, right? We built such a relationship that you know what I mean? There, there was, and we lose sight of that from time to time. Oh, I didn't make a sale today. Tomorrow, I'm asking everyone to buy in the first six, 16 seconds. And before you know it, I'm not selling again today either, right? There's some days, literally, I'm basketball, I'm a basketball player still. So I like, I'm already going 20 minutes. Well, are we okay on time? I'm, I'm fine on time. We're here. We're here okay. because you know we want to be here. So thank you. You're good. <laughs> I just gonna be. I just gonna be back to the Statler by ten o'clock for like a production meeting or whatever. Uh, yeah, you you got a good twenty minutes. Okay, good. Yeah. Good. I, when I get started, it's like arguing stuff. I love this. I must, sometimes I'll do this like for new agent training for like four hours and stuff. So this is about. Uh, what was I even saying? <laughs> about the basketball. There you go. See, so I'm. Oh yes, thank you. I'm a basketball guy. So for me, I'm always thinking like, because in basketball, I try to stay like a step ahead, right? And in sales, it's easier for me to jump too many steps ahead and forget to be in the moment. This reminds me to be in the moment. Relationship, problem, solution, right? That's it. I mean, it's as simple as you can make it. It really is. Okay, so I, I got really good at this, building rapport. My first year, I would build rapport so well that people would, and then I would send monthly newsletters and everything else. People would call me and they would say, somebody else offer me a cheaper product, but I can't leave you. I got so good at the relationship piece that I thought I was great at sales. I was just great at building relationships. Yeah, I've eventually got really good at sales, but my first year, I wasn't any better than anybody else, you know? Okay, so, so that's important to me, super important. And the third piece is I did more activity than other people. I made more calls, did more door knocks. I asked more people to buy. Like my first year, I had this thing set, sit, sell. And my goal was to set 15 appointments, sit with 10, and sell five. I called it the triple S system. And every single week, I, I do my numbers based on a week, on a weekly basis. I did whatever it took activity-wise to hit those specific mini targets, because I knew if I hit these mini targets and I asked 10 people to buy every single week, then I would hit my annual target of 100K. 
So yes, I love we years. Yes, I love months, but I love weeks even more because you can win this week. And when I win this week, I'm on track. And then it's not so like overbearing or, you know what I mean? Or so much pressure. It's just one week at a time, right? I can string together a couple good days. I can have a good week. I have a good week. I can have a good year. I can have a good week. I can have a good year. I can have a good year. I can have a good decade. If I can have a good decade, I can have a great career, right? One week at a time. So in our office, my first year in our office now, what we do this week? 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 And how can we repeat that every week and even improve it and get better every week, right? And so we run, con we just released a contest. We got a bunch of young guys. So we just released a contest for like some new Xbox X series. I don't know what that is. I probably, I probably said it wrong. I don't even know what it is. But, but we just released a contest in our office like with that. You got a bunch morning. of gamers in your office. Yeah, we got a bunch of gamers. I, I'm not a gamer by any means. Uh, I'll play, you know, I've got a couple arcade machines in my house, so I'll play like Golden Tee or Pac-Man or NBA Jam or something like that, but I'm not like going to sit around and play Call of Duty, you know. <laughs> a lot of people do though, with, you know, more oh, yeah. power to you if you're watching and that's what you do, they're great. Okay, cool. Right. Uh, I did more activity than other people. I got to where, I got to where my, you know what my goal was? We had this leaderboard in our office that I actually told our sales manager, I actually went and bought the whiteboard, gave it to my sales manager, said, you need to hang this up because people don't know what they're doing every day and they need to see their activity every day. And no one wants to come in to where this is a Monday, this is a Tuesday, and this is a total or whatever, right? Probably there's more days on the board, but you get the idea. No one wants to come up here and, you know, Sally doesn't want to come up here and put a goose egg on the board. No one physically wants to do that. It pains them to do that. And it pains me too. So we got to where every single, we had 15 agents in the office-ish and every single week, maybe 20, every single week, it was my goal to be at the top of the board. Because we took the results from the previous week, we still do it in my office today, we took the results from the previous week and we repositioned people on the board based on their prior week's results. And you get a competitive dude like me involved in something like that, I will do whatever it takes to be on the top of the board every single week. I just will. And so I always tracked like well, what? What? What are some of the uh, sales-related activity that we talked about? That so, you track? how many phone calls are you making? Yes. Uh, calls. How many quotes are you doing? Mm. Um, you know, our goal is each person's five quotes a day. Good. And uh, love that. About a thousand premium a day. If you can do that. Good. Every single day. So, like quotes, sales, and premium. Yeah. Yeah. Boom. I love it. So the, I would I would have these four things in a smaller box. To where I had to go and report my calls, quotes, sales, and premium. And then at the end of the week, I was able to put a total, like, okay, um, and I don't know what a weekly total would be, but I guess it's 25 quotes, five sales, 5,000 in premium or less, more? A week? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 5,000 in premium. Yeah. So is it 25 quotes, five sales, 5,000? Yeah. Okay, good. So, so then I would figure out what activity do I need to do to hit that. Some weeks when I have 600 calls, Wow, I hit my goal. Next week, I, you know, I spent, I drink a lot more coffee, and, and I, you know, was sick, and I had 285 calls. I didn't hit my goal, well, because my guess what? I didn't have my activity high enough, right? So that's why I'm big on the actual activity. Of when I'm here, I'm producing, right? When I'm here, because it, it's it helps the office. Yeah, it helps Rich, but it also helps you guys. Absolutely, it helps everybody. It helps everybody. Okay. Any questions so far? You're getting me excited. No, this is great. All right, <laughs> well, we'll be here till six. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> great. Cody, do you have any recommendation? Where 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 should we start in the library? Where's usually it, is it is it is it already kind of lined out for us? I would I would go through it in order. Okay. Yes. Yes. Right. You, you. I think you. I don't know if they locked it so you can't skip around or not. I know when you eventually, when you've been through the content, you can skip around, but I think it makes you go through it in order at first. Um, but I, 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 it starts with a lot of the basics, and we're actually adding a bunch of additional modules next month when I get back from my trips into the cell system. So we're always adding content. We're also releasing a, uh, we, we do a monthly live Q&A with the cell system so that everyone can come on to a group style private webinar for only members of the cell system where I'm actually training 
and answering questions live nice. every single month. So you, yeah, you're getting video content that you desperately need every day, but you're also getting me live every month as well because it's, I've subscribed to stuff in the past where I'm like, I wish I got the person, you know, um, more. And so I'm like, well, let's do that, then, you know? So, um, and we're gonna, I don't know what date that is in October, we're, we're supposed to be releasing that like next week. So great, we'll make sure you get posted. So, yeah, good question. <clears throat> What do you guys think, real quick, what do you guys think the, like, I would love to go around the room, each person really quick. What's your name again? Matt. Matthew? Mm -hmm. Can we go by Matt? Yeah. Or Matthew? <laughs> Let's spell like this? Yes, sir. Okay, cool. What's your, what do you think is, whole, like, what do you think is holding you back from whatever that next level is for you? Consistency. I think I do the activity. I think I am. I'm pretty good at building rapport. Good. I think I, you know, rest on my mind and my success from the prior month. It's just like any, you play sports. Yes. You win a game and then the next week you're, yes. you know, complacent. Play down to your competition. Totally. Totally. Good. Good. Thank you. Yes, sir. Good. I think you need, in that case, I think you need, like, shorter term targets to, like, pull you into that direction. Or before you know it, you're like, you know, I had a great month. I don't, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't why, why am I doing it again? You know, and and I, I get, I get that way too from time to time because I can focus and produce in a large capacity very quick, and then before I know it, I'm like, okay, what, what's next? Right? I get bored really easy. You know, I shot a video walking around my house a week ago talking about uh, Sunday yeah. morning. Yes, motivation. And I'm like, what, what is, what? Most people lack motivation. They get bored. They need to be challenged. And I'm the same way, you know, I, I need something in the near future, a target that literally pulls me and that motivates me enough to focus for a short period of time to pull me in that direction, get that target. And that's just me. And I think a lot of people are similar. So good. What's your name? Dottie. Dottie? Yeah. Do you have to spell that one? D-O-T-T-I-E. Perfect. You, you, you keep it simple. I figured that was it. Well, what's it for you? Well, I just started last week and I have no sales experience whatsoever. So okay. I definitely need some knowledge. Good. Good. But she's killing it. She is. Boom! She's Boom! Her activity is incredible. There we go. Well, that's, that's what's amazing, right? You, the team, you, you're already impressing the team. You, you're you showing up. Uh, you're putting in the work activity-wise. Plug it into the cell system every day. We'll give you that over time. So you're already doing the right things, though, it sounds like. So that's huge. And that's, that's, that's rare, by the way. Like, that's something to notice because so many people we hired so many sales people in our office we hired like a dozen in three weeks one time and i don't know why but most sales people don't like just show up and do the stuff that you're already doing so that's like so impressive you're already head and shoulders above the rest as long as you don't let that change and, and you start to you know plug in and focus on hey i need to do better at sales then one of the things that we've done in, as in on our team meetings every monday is we talk about the, the math, it's, it's all math. And, yes. and that's what you really teach in a lot of your videos. It's you have X amount of calls, you get X amount of quotes, you make X amount of presentations, yes. and you got, and there's your sales, right? I yes. mean, that's, it's numbers. So you have to do the calls, you've got to do the numbers because if you're not calling enough people, then you're not gonna get enough quotes. I mean, that's, just, that's just the way it works. Right. That's exactly the way it works. I love that. Absolutely right. Yeah. That, this is what holds a lot of people back. Yes, it's this initially. It ends up being this. And but and it's not like it's the hardest piece. People are like, well, dude, I, I want to learn, you know, because most salespeople, there's a type of salesperson that takes longer to, to find success sometimes, and that's the type of individual that wants to know everything before they do anything, right? And they hold themselves back from doing activity because they're like, I gotta check all these boxes internally before I feel comfortable making a call. You know, uh, doesn't seem like we have that on this team, so that's awesome. What's your name, man? Kathy. Kathy. C K. K. Boom. Um, more target, I guess. Targets and goals. Oh, good. Weekly goals. Yeah. Good. Good. Do you feel like you you can lose focus a little mm -hmm. bit every now and then just because of that? Yes. Good. I get that. That's, yeah. Kathy's amazing. She's uh, so she's our customer service rep, right? Awesome. And, but she also cross sells unbelievable. I mean, last 
last folio she did like sixteen thousand and five hundred and something premium, which is wow. exceptional for a CSR. So she definitely Boom. is she and she just started a couple months, two, three months ago as well. So she's just gonna get her feet back on track, but I think she's really starting to see that she can sell, she can do this, and uh, so I, I think that she's done really remarkable with that. That's huge. Way to go. Wow, that's awesome. Do you cross sell into life too? Um, I try. I mean, I, I put, you know, we send out like mailing and stuff like that. Um, ask, you know, mm -hmm. um, but mm, it's not my strong suit, I guess. I need to get better at that like, portion of it. But um, Here, Here's one idea or thought of, of how I've trained some other offices to ask in the past. Okay. Um, is, you know, hey, Miss Betty, I'm, I'm updating your account, um, and, it, and it looks like uh, that you don't have your life insurance with, with us. Who, who do you have that with? I said, well, well, why do you ask? Well, you know, it's important to us. We want to make sure that we're, we're more of a full service agency. We want to make sure that we're helping our agents, our clients in the best way possible. And uh, you probably got it somewhere, and you'd be surprised at how good Farmers is, is at handling that. So, you have it currently, you know, do you have, do you have who, who do you currently have that with that? Um, I have it, you know, down the street. Well, the more the more you have with us, the, the you know, the, the more money you can save, and, and the more relationship we can build. So I'm assuming if you're able to have it all in one under one roof, and we we're able to take care of you, it would probably simplify your life, wouldn't it? Cool. Maybe. Okay, that's good. <laughs> Is that all right? Yes. Yeah. What's your name again, sir? Lee. Lee. L E E. Simple. Yep. The, what you hit on the building rapport, um, you know, we'll take cold calls. Where calls are coming in, and we grab them, and uh, and I, you'll have this assumption that well, these people are busy and they're in a hurry. Blah blah. So I want to make this as quick as possible. I got, I can get this done in two minutes. And blah blah blah. You're not going to get the sale, yeah. you know. And so if you can just realize that if they've taken the time to call in, they probably do have some time, and they'll tell you if they don't, but. You know, without that building the rapport, mm. and and it's easy to build a rapport when it's when you've been talking to a client over three or four years or already with us. We we kept people from leaving just because of the rapport they have with the office when, when our rates go up. So you know it works, but you know just taking the time. And if the people on the other end don't feel like building the rapport, then maybe they're maybe they're not your thing you know it's, yes. it's just not going to happen anyway but if you, if you build a rapport um, so that's what i need to work on mm -hmm. it's just taking a deep breath you know how's it going today? You know, yeah yeah we got rain coming in <laughs> or whatever it might be you know and just kind of yeah get it going and i'm not going to go from there so that's yeah. that's been an issue that i got to work on okay thank you bye what's one thing that you guys have noticed so far uh, when I'm asking you a question, and then you're responding, what's is there something you notice that I'm doing or not doing, or something from the last few minutes? Listening. Okay, good. That's exactly right. Yeah, good. It was not a geometry question, so that's good. Uh, that's right. Yeah, listening. And what was something else while I was listening? You want to engage? Yeah. Okay. Look engaged. Good. Go. Offering offers. Good. And I I do my best to not interrupt someone and let them talk. Right? I haven't seen anyone do that by the way, so this is this is just random. But what you'll notice is people want to talk. People love to talk about themselves. A lot of people are have a lot going on, sometimes they want to vent. And by letting people talk and listening, it will you'll end up doing this and sometimes you're like, I didn't even do anything. Well, you did. You did. You know, you had, you stayed engaged. You listened. You didn't interrupt them. It's a lot of salespeople have a, a poor habit of, you know, someone talking, and them wanting to get to the point, and them like, well, okay, well, Betty, well, now, you know, and they just interrupted the person, right? And that irritates some people. So those little things, as simple as it sounds, it goes a long way. You know, like I was on a Zoom with a lady a couple weeks ago, and I was like, what did you notice about the last three minutes? She said, well. Three things. She said, you focused on building rapport. She's like, you didn't talk about yourself the whole time. She's like, and you just let me talk. I'm like, okay, good. She's like, and you looked engaged. You know, she's like, yeah, you, you, your, your, your eye contact was great. You were, 
uh, nodding your head, you know, which showed me you were actually listening and you were in agreement with what I was saying, you know, those small things. And then she said, the third thing is you lean forward, right? So maybe this isn't for pertaining specifically to calls, but in person, Zooms, whatever, it can, right? And, and with, with body language, I can tell when you guys are like engaged or not engaged based on your body language, right? So in a bigger training, um, when that's going on, I may like walk in front of the person and like ask them their name and try to get them engaged and like tell a story because facts tell stories sell. People love stories, right? So you'll notice some of that stuff. As I've gotten better at speaking, I've tried to do that. But they like if I'm leaning forward, I'm engaged, right? Or if, I, if I'm talking to a prospect and they're leaning backwards, I may be losing them, you know? I may be losing them. So that's why it's a, it's a focus. So good, good, good feedback. You got it, buddy. All right, what's your name again? Yes, Y-A-S-U. Y-A-S-U, mm -hmm. just like that? Yes. Perfect, right. awesome, buddy. Yes, Sue? Yes. Awesome. What, what, what's, what's it for you, man? Uh, I like to be more uh, proactive and uh, talk at the you know, face to face to get the more um, great relationship to, to work. Good. Good, I love that. Can I brag on Yasu? Please, please. please. He, uh, his first sale, he was brand new, no experience except he went and got his license that he runs on. He speaks Japanese. We, we did a quote, as I said, just, you know, this is what they need to do. He goes in, speaking a language I don't understand. Three minutes later, comes out with a paper in his hand going, sold it. <laughs> you know, it was just the most. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's cool, man. Good for you. How, how long have you been doing it? Uh, about the two months now. Good. Wow. That's awesome. That's awesome. Good for you. Good for you. And yeah, thank you for speaking up. That's great. I love that. That's good. That's really cool. That's really cool. Right? So so overall, the good, the good news is all of these are solvable, right? We can help every single one of these. Consistency. Talked about it, sales knowledge, right? Riches, riches, riches added it to the squad with the CA sales system, goals and targets. We all, especially in a, in a CSR role to where you want to be cross selling and adding, right? And, and asking questions. Um, we have this, I actually had this office in, in uh, I was training the state farm office in New York and I had them do something simple. They never asked about life insurance ever. And I'm like, okay, let's try it. Let's, let's play a game. I said, today. I want you to put 10 pennies on your desk or in your left pocket, either way. And every time you ask about life insurance or mention it, you move them to the right side of your desk. And that's a small, super small, visual to remind you, just ask, yeah, just ask. And most of the time we get in our head about how to ask or why to ask or, well, is it the right time to ask? Who cares? Just ask. Right? And, and what, what you'll notice is you'll fall into business yeah. and you'll end up getting better at asking along the way. You'll get better timing, you'll get better at saying it, you'll get better at asking it. You know, you'll get better at responding when they give you some silly objection that you, you know, are expecting anyway, right? Like you said earlier, people were busy, right? I don't, like, I don't answer the phone when I'm busy. I just don't, right? So people answer their phone and they're busy, eh, I know they're not, you know? No, they're not. And here, real quick on object objections, since I moved into that for a second. There's three A's that I preach on objections. You'll see this in the cell system. And Rich and some of you probably already seen it. Agree, answer, and ask. Most salespeople are trained in a way that's a little combative and disagreeable, when in reality, two minutes good? Oh, okay. four minutes? Okay, yeah, you're good. You may want to go ahead and, uh, if you got your phone call over too. Um, most people are trained with like, I'm not interested or something like that. Like they'll say, well, what do you mean you're not interested? You don't have enough information to be interested. The problem with that is it's a little combative. It's a little disagreeable. I love to just simply agree, yeah. answer their objection and then finish with a question. So it puts me back in control. Cause think, think about it. <clears throat> when they give you an objection at all, what are they trying to do? They're trying to gain control of the call. And 90 plus percent of the time, 
they do not mean what they're actually saying. They're hearing a salesperson talk. They're saying something because they don't want to talk to you anymore, right? Or they want to make it harder on you. So like when I walk into Best Buy, for example, and I'm, and I'm like, I, I walk in to buy something and I hope it's the best, right? And I walk in, I'm like, hey, uh, they're like, hey, how can we help you? What, 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 do people, what, what do we always say? Just looking. Yeah, just looking, just looking. Car dealerships totally like this. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You walk on a car lot, they come up to you and your first thing you're saying is, I'm just looking. Yeah, yeah. Like, no, no, no crap, Sherlock. You know, it's like you walked on the lot to look at something, and if you like what you find, you're going to buy it, right? Same thing with, with Best Buy. I'm showing up because I need something. Like, I don't just walk into Best Buy to just walk around for hours and look, window shop, and never buy, right? I always buy something because I feel bad walking in and not buying something. I, like, feel weird about it. I don't know. Kind of like parking in front of another person's business when I'm going to the other businesses beside it. Like, I don't do that either. I don't know weird, okay? And <laughs> in that moment, why did we say, just looking, car lot, Best Buy, whatever, why did we say that? Just a conditioned response, and then you just, it's what you've been saying your whole life. Human nature. It's exactly right. It's conditioned. It's human nature. It's So maybe the stuff they're telling you is conditioned. Maybe they don't really mean it, you know? Hey, I'm really busy. I'm with you. I'm super busy too. I'll take, I'll, 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 I'll be quick. I'll just take two minutes. We'll, we'll get you thinking about this. Yeah, your video on uh, overcoming objections is fantastic. Thank you, Barb. You, know, you throw out all these objections and you just go right through. Hey, I totally agree. I get where you're coming from. Maybe you do the next step. Maybe you do the next, it's like, wow, that was just like easy. That's my goal is to simplify the complex complexity of this business for sure. So, and it, no matter what they throw at you, you know, like for example, uh, I was training in the state farm office six months ago, four months ago, whatever it was, and it was it was early when COVID started, and they're like, you know what? Um, people were like, well, I don't, I don't. They would bring up life insurance. They'd be like, well, I don't want to talk about life insurance. Like it gives me the heebie-jeebies or something like that. You know, I'm like. Yeah, it gives me the EBGBs too. I don't love talking about it, so let's get it out of the way. You know, who do you have it with? <laughs> right? You know, or or did you have do you have, you know, life insurance on your kid or your grandkid? You know, well, I, I you know, I, I don't want to talk about that. That, you know, that that's 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 it's weird to me. You know, I don't love talking about that, you know, because my kid, you know, and dying and all that. I'm like, I get it. I had have the same conversation with, with you know last week because of that, and I, I don't love talking about it either, but if we get out of the way and we protect everybody, never have to talk about it again. You know what I mean? It's just like people, it's normal to just do that instead of coming up with this fancy answer and trying to like overthink stuff. You just, know, you know, Cody, it's interesting because there's a, a lot of sales books out there about overcoming objections. And it's like for every objection, there's a whole different thing you've got to say. And it makes it really, you, it makes you almost kind of think too much. Yes. But what I like about your process, it's the same no matter what the objection is. No matter what they say, it's agree, answer, answer, ask. ask. It's the same thing. It's just, you just follow the same pattern. And so it makes it so much easier to, you don't have to think, you just agree, answer, ask. That's right. It just makes it so much easier. So I appreciate that. You got it. Thank you, buddy. Yeah, you're right. It's, it's way too complicated. The way it really is needs to be simple, you know. And you can do the same thing every time it'll work. So, all right. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Hey, Cody. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one you're gonna love. It's right there. Click on it. See you in there. Hey, almost every insurance agent I know struggles with objections, specifically what to do and how to improve your closing ability. So I'm gonna talk through several different things. Okay, I always talk about uh, my specific appointment process, the warm up, fact find.